Hi, in this video, I'm going to go through the steps required to make iron-on machine embroidered patches like the ones shown here. No prior knowledge is needed and I'll be taking you through every step, but in case you do know some of this stuff, I'll make sure to include chapters below that you can jump ahead to the parts of the video that you do need. To follow along with this project, you'll need the following tools. The Brother PE 800 embroidery machine and its accessories, your computer and a flash drive, embroidery scissors, an iron, and an iron board. You'll also need the following materials, black felt, temporary 504 adhesive spray, a box of bro thread embroidery thread, tear away stabilizer, a box of pre-wound bobbins, and a pressing cloth. And all of this will be listed in the description box below. Once you have your physical items, you'll need to purchase a digital design if you're not taking your design directly from the machine. Let's get our design on Etsy. If you put embroidery designs into the search bar, the results that you'll get are all over the place. So think of something specific that you'd like to stitch out, then type that in. I'm going to do a search for embroidery designs smiley face. This face on the left is not great for the type of patch that I'll be showing you here today. We'd like for our stitches to fill the design so the face on the right is perfect. We also want an outline, which this face also has. Today though, I'll actually be stitching out a design that I already have in my previously purchased items. To access it, I go to my profile picture, click on purchases, search for the design I'm looking for and download it. When you open the zip file, you should get a folder with different file formats. The format that we're interested in for the Brother PE800 is the PES file. Now take your flash drive, plug it into the computer, then you can drop your PES file into the drive. Once your file is on the drive, eject it, plug it out of your computer, and plug it into the embroider machine. Turn on the machine and wait for it to power up. Once it's on, press the display screen, then press OK and cancel if prompted to get rid of a previous job. Click on the icon for your flash drive. Find the design in the drive, click on it, then press set. To make the most of your materials and time, set up your machine to stitch out multiple copies of the design in one session. Press move and use the arrows to position the design so it can fit more on the workspace. Then press OK and add to start the process of adding the design a few more times. Now our pattern is fully programmed in and we are ready to get started. Now the great thing about the embroidery machine is that it tells you exactly what to do. So these are all the colors that we'll be using. And so here we have 206, that's the first color. And so I went into my box of bro thread and I grabbed 206, totally impossible to see, but trust me, it is 206. All right, so when we are threading this, we want the thread to hang down in the back and you want to hold it towards you and we can stick this over here and now we need something to hold the thread in place so this came with my machine in two sizes but i actually purchased this which i love and so we take this or the other one and we stick it on here to hold the thread in place. And the reason I love this one is because it, the thread will not get stuck between the spool and the thing holding it in place. And that is really a game changer for the embroidery machine. All right, so once I have that, I'm pulling out enough thread to get started. And I'm gonna follow the numbers, one going down, two going around, three going down and up, four going over a silver thing here, five going down, six going through here, and then finally through the needle eye. And I know that sounds like a lot, but if you follow along, I promise you it's not so bad. So here we go. One going down, two going around, and I'm holding it in place here. Three going down and back up. Now here is where I definitely want to hold the thread in place because I want to make sure I catch that silver thing that you cannot see back there. You want to feel that tension. Once you feel it, you know you're good. Five going down, six going through here. So we actually have an automatic threader, but I can never get that to work. So I just snip this to make that clean. And I just stick this from front to back through the eye of the needle. So to all my very observant friends, 
notice that at this point I made a mistake that could have been very damaging to my project and I do want to point this out I got lucky and it did not ruin my project but you want to make sure that when you thread the needle that it doesn't fall out of the very last place that it should go before it goes through the eye of the needle which it did for me all right let's continue just like a regular sewing machine, you need a thread in the bottom, you need a bobbin, and you need something in the top. Now to make sure that your machine is functioning properly, don't just choose a regular bobbin. You want to do something that is specific for your machine. And so let's talk about how to get that bobbin in the sewing machine. So the first thing that you want to do is take off your cover. So there is a little thing here. You just pull that. So here I have my pre-wound bobbin and I will link this in the description below. And so having a pre-wound bobbin is great because it allows you to not have to stop every single time your bobbin thread runs out and have to rewind your bobbin. And the great thing about this is white for embroidery is great. You can just use white all the time. And notice I have my thread hanging down on the left side. And so you want that to always be the case. So think of it like a P. And so I'm going to take this and I'm going to drop it in to my embroidery machine and I'm going to hold down the thread and then I'm going to take this and loop it around this little plastic thing here. There we go. And then also loop it around here. When it gets to here, just snip it when you pull. All right, and that's it. So now we can just cover it back up so stick this here and just press down and we're all set. The hooping process is a vital step in any embroidery project. So here I have my hoop, it's been through quite a lot. Um, and I have something called my stabilizer. This is tearaway stabilizer. I also have my adhesive spray and I have a sheet of felt. I like using felt for embroidery for two reasons. It is nice and stable, so our pattern should stitch on really neatly, and it does not fray, which most things that are nice and stable would fray, so it's kind of the best of all worlds. Now, in order to hoop my stabilizer, I have my hoop here in two. I'm using the piece that has a little screw here, and I want to make sure that it is pointing that opening is pointing downwards because that is how it is going to go into the machine. Then I take my stabilizer and I place it on top. Now I take this, I stick it in to the other piece of the hoop and I want this to be nice and tight. And once it's set, I screw to the right to tighten this until I can't get it any tighter. So now I'm going to spray in here. So if you have a box, if you have a sheet of newspaper, that is ideal. You want to make sure that this does not go on your floor, on your table, your workspace, because it is pretty sticky and it is hard to get off, which is why I have this mess happening right here. All right, so off screen, I'm going to spray this. I'm going to hold it approximately a foot away and just make sure it's all covered. Once I have that all sprayed on, I take my felt and I smooth it on over. As the name suggests, this is just temporary adhesive, but that's all we need. Make sure it's really on there and really smooth. And once you have that, now we are ready to get this onto our machine. So if you take a look here, we have two grooves. And these two grooves are going to be placed on these two things that kind of look like screws on the embroidery machine. So in order to place it, I am going to take my hoop and I'm going to put it under the presser foot. And you can't see this here, but I am putting my two grooves on top of the two screws. And I'm going to press down above both. So notice I have my fingers in two places here. And you want to press down on both equally until you hear the snap. So in order to get started, we take the presser foot and we put it down. There is a lever in the back here. And so we take that. And now notice that turned green. We have everything all thread and ready to go. And all we have to do is press this button. So 
So our machine just finished stitching out the first golden portion. And as you can see, it's prompting us to change to red. So because we're doing four of the same patterns, instead of switching to red, then switching to blue, then switching and switching and switching, what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump ahead. So this button, that plus and minus sign on the embroidery machine, allows you to not just jump stitches, but it allows you to jump thread as well. So I'm going to press the plus sign and that will allow us to switch colors. And I'm not sure how many colors I need to switch forward. So I'm just gonna press okay to check. All right, now it looks like it's blue, then black, then yellow. So I'm gonna switch, press again and jump two more. And now it's prompting us to do yellow again on the other side. So now I can just press embroider and it does the next finger. And if I want to pause the machine, I can press this. And whenever I'm ready, I can press start again. So I'm just gonna take the excess thread off and we're gonna start again. Now we have all our golden portions stitched out. And so now I'm gonna go ahead and do the red portions. And so I'm gonna take my thread and I'm just gonna click that and go back all the way to the very beginning and when i get to the very first thread that will be gold that's not what we want to do we want to do the next one so i'm going to move forward that one press ok and i'm going to do the same for red i'm going to stitch out all the red portions and then switch to all the green portions so on and so forth All of my peace signs are now stitched out, so I can now take this off of the embroidery machine. In order to do that, I pull this back here and I pull up my hoop and I pull it from underneath the presser foot. And now we're ready to cut these out and make our patches. Here is what one of my patches looked like when I cut it out. And in order to cut it out, I used these scissors. So this one has a big curve, this one has a small curve, and this one's straight. And so I just run around the shape as best as I can using whichever curve makes the most sense given what I'm cutting out at that point. My final step is to get my heat and bond ultra hold onto my patch so as it currently is this could be a sew-on patch but we need to get it to be an iron-on patch so here is what my ultra bond looks like this side is pretty grainy bumpy and that is where the adhesive is this side is actually paper so what we're going to do is we're going to get our patch onto that grainy side and to avoid having a lot of glue mess up the cloth, the material that we have here, I'm going to cut the shape relatively close. This fabric is intended for us to use to protect the iron board. Notice my iron board is a mess. That's because I have had to learn my lesson the hard way. All right, so now I'm going to stick this here. And again, my patch is on the grainy part. And I'm going to make just a little patch sandwich here. Now I'm going to take my iron and I am going to press down. I've had my iron on for a while, so it's pretty hot. I'm going to wait at least 20 more seconds. Now we're going to let this cool for a bit. And once it's cool, I'm going to turn it over and press it down on the back side to make sure it's really on there. Right, so turn this over and again, close this down. And press down for another 20 seconds. Here's my patch on the adhesive, very, very strongly bonded together. It's nice and cool now, and now I'm able to cut the shape around 
And as you go to grab a scissors, two things that are helpful. Again, scissors with a curve to it, very, very helpful, but also you do not want to use your fabric scissors because this is paper and there is remnants of glue. Even though it's cooled down, you want to treat your fabric scissors as well as you can. Notice I keep turning my scissors around and that is so I can follow the shape. Here is our patch all done. On the back, there is a sheet of paper in order to attach it to anything, a bag, a jacket, a shirt, anything you want. Just peel the paper off. And just like what we did with the iron just now, we would place it on our item. Make sure to protect your iron board and press it on with the iron and you're good to go. All right, hope you enjoyed this video.